Hey guys, it's Ebony. I am on my way to work and um, it's kind of loud so I, I'm trying to speak up. But every time I'm in the car and I try to record a video like this and I try to speak up, I feel like I end up straining my voice. So, I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you guys who showed me support on my last video where I was talking about my conviction and the things that I was experiencing, uh, experiencing spiritually. And I am in a very happy place today. Um, I have really been taking a lot of time um, since I made that video and even before that to really uh, dig into God's Word and to pray and to um, really focus on my spiritual health and I feel really good. Um, I can't say that that's been the case every day over the past two weeks. Some days I felt really, really down and defeated and I don't know if it was you know spiritual attacks or what but I, some days I felt really down but today I feel great and um, I'm just glad that I'm taking this time to you know refocus and remember what's priority in my life and that's my relationship with Jesus Christ and I thank you guys for your comments you guys are so sweet and so encouraging and I look at you guys like sisters seriously I have my own sisters who I really love <laughs> but I look at you guys as sisters too because some of you guys are so sweet and encouraging and uplifting and you don't know what a blessing that is to me and I'm pretty sure anybody else who you come in contact with in life you're probably just that sweet and uplifting and that's so important that is so important that we just continue to uplift each other and to encourage each other um, because sometimes words you know those say sticks and stones uh, may break my bones but words will never hurt me that is such a lie because words do hurt and words do heal and words do uplift and words do um, encourage but words can tear people down and it can hurt them and it can you know do serious damage so I just thank you for being positive on my video and um, let me tell you what I've been doing so every day I've been reading the word every single day and this is my goal for the rest of the time that I'm here on earth or the rest of the time that um, the rest of the time that we have left whichever comes first you know so I'm reading my word every single day because the word of God does say that man cannot live on bread alone but that we need to have the word of God so um, I'm looking at the word of God like food if I'm gonna eat every day then I'm gonna read the word of God every day I don't go any day without missing a meal, so I shouldn't go any day, any day without reading the Word of God. So I, I really pray that God can help me to stay focused on that and to keep that a priority, just like I make eating a priority. You know, I have to do it, so I have to read the Word of God. Um, I pray as much as possible. <coughs> I've been praying with my children morning and night. I used to try to do like a Bible study with them like twice a week. But now I've increased that to every night. But I don't do it with them collectively. Like I used to do it with them all sitting around me, all four of them. But now I do it individually. And I find out that that is working so much better for me because when I used to have them all sitting around me and we used to, you know, do the Bible study together, people would get frustrated with other people. Oh, she's on my leg. He's hitting me. He well, He won't move. You know, people would get frustrated with each other, or if someone would say something, somebody would like, no, that's not what it means, you don't know, you know, and a lot of distractions were taking place, so now, it was, it, sometimes it was terrible, to the point where I didn't even want to finish the Bible study, because people were just getting irritated with each other, which happens with siblings, you know, it happens, so, but anyway, um, so now I've been doing it individually, and now it's itching, sorry. So now I've been doing it individually, so I just take them in the room one at a time. We just read maybe, you know, a few verses um, out of the Bible. Last night we read 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the first paragraph of chapter 3, which talks about how people will be in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, um, unforgiving, treacherous, brutal, um, boastful, um, proud, um, that those particular verses and so I, I read it with each of the children except for the baby except for the three-year-old I just pray with her but each of the other children I read sorry guys I'm, tr I'm trying to get over thank you <laughs> okay um 
So like I was saying, so I read it with each of the children and I got them to tell me what they thought it meant and then I explained to them what, you know, what I believe it means. Um, and, you know, we just discussed it. We discussed one of the one of the things that it said in that particular paragraph, that first paragraph in chapter three, it said, um, uh, I think it said something like children, um, children won't respect their parents or something like that, something to that effect. I don't have the, the verse memorized, but, or children will dis be a disobedient to parents, something like that. Well, anyway, that was really a good talking point for the kids because, you know, that's huge right now. Even compared to when I was a child growing up, if you compare the children right now to when back in my my time when I was growing up, there's a huge difference in the respect level that children have for parents, the obedience level. Um, it's almost out of control nowadays. Um, so that was a good talking point to discuss with the children. So I've been doing that every night and it's been really, really great. And I want to continue that too because I feel like that's so important. Our youth is being targeted so much by saying through so many different avenues and you know the only way we can combat that is through prayer and through feeding the children the word of God and really talking with them and making sure they understand um, the seriousness of, of these sins and the seriousness of certain things that they can participate in so anyway so I'm in a good place. I'm on vacation next week for Thanksgiving. So I think I'll be able to have time to record some videos and um, and to put up some different content on my channel. Um, I've been praying about my channel. I still haven't felt convicted to, you know, leave YouTube. So I, I'm, I, I'm keeping that line of communication open with God. And whatever I, I feel in my spirit is what I'm going to follow. But I haven't felt that conviction. So... I, I did com feel convicted to spend less time on YouTube, so I've been definitely doing that and spending more time um, in the Word and with Jesus. So, anyway, I wanted to tell you guys about this dream that I had last night, which was so weird. I've been having, like, these really intense dreams for, um, let me see if this thing is still recording. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to be talking to myself. Um, so, I've been having these really intense and vivid dreams for months now it even had got to a point where i was having these dreams every night and I, I wanted to start writing them down so i could see if in any way they were connected but i stopped writing them that down so i was never able to really determine if there was a connection between all, all of the dreams but last night i had a dream that i was in my bedroom sitting on the bed and i had a newborn baby in my arms and um i understood that it was my baby that i had just give, given birth the baby had maybe in my mind was maybe like a day or two old so I don't know how I got from the hospital to my bedroom all of those details I wasn't focusing on I was just amazed that I had given birth um that I had given birth and I my husband was in the room I think he was fixing the curtains in my bedroom trying to close the curtains or something and then I remember looking to my husband and saying what did you say the baby's name was again was it Mark Anthony and then my husband was like no it's not Mark Anthony it's Joel it's Joel Anthony, J-O-E-L, Joel Anthony. And I was like, oh, Joel Anthony. And then I was holding the baby, and the baby started doing like, uh, uh, uh. you know how babies do when they're hungry? He started like turning his head and like searching for, um, searching for, for, uh, breasts. Like, you know, babies who are breastfeed, how they kind of turn their head and search. So, um, I remember saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to breastfeed this baby. Um, but I remember in my head thinking that, oh, this is going to be difficult because the baby is only like one or two days old. So at that day, at that stage, they haven't really caught on how to latch on and how to, um, suckle. I think that's the right word. <laughs> they haven't really caught on how to latch on and really start, you know, sucking appropriately to get, you know, to get milk. So a lot of times you have to really struggle maybe that first week or so. Um, when you're breastfeeding. So I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be, I'm going to have to really struggle to get this baby to learn how to breastfeed. But as soon as I put the baby up to my breast, it just latched on like it was, you know, six months old or something. I was like, wow, this baby is really something. And then um, after the baby ate and the baby was full, I was like, okay, I'm going to hold the baby up in front of me and we're going to play. Like, so I was, hold I was holding the baby up and it I started making faces, you know, like, hey, baby, or whatever. 
and then um, the baby hopped down out of my lap and started walking took like four four steps and then fell to his knees and I'm like man this baby is advanced and this so I remember telling either my friend or my sister or somebody um, I don't know if it was on the phone or in person but I was like yeah this baby is only like a day or two and it's already walking can you believe that and then I just remember in my dream just feeling really fulfilled I'm like I have five children and I felt really happy and really fulfilled and I had another son because right now I only have one son and coincident I don't know if it's a coincidence or what or is how I dreamed it but my son's name is Eric Anthony and so the fact that this baby was Joel Anthony and they have the same middle name is not something I would ever do in real life but it was just that's just the way it happened in the dream but I just remember feeling very fulfilled and happy and I don't know I gotta turn again guys let's see so I don't know um I don't know why I dreamed that I'm not pregnant I'm not trying to get pregnant I don't know why I dreamed that I don't know what it meant I just know I was happy in the dream I know the baby was really beautiful and I was very very happy to be a mother again um so yeah that's my dream and that was just very weird but it it, it kind of put me in a good mood because you know that feeling if you if you have kids when you have a newborn baby that happiness you feel that's what i felt in my dream all right guys so i'm almost at work now so i will talk to you guys again soon i just wanted to check in with you guys and let you know i'm doing well and i thank you guys for being such wonderful friends and um i'll be back again soon um talk to you later bye